Once you have created a schedule, you can change the formatting of the title and headers to adjust how the information is presented in the schedule. I've already opened the door schedule view. The schedule is already sorted and grouped, but I'd like to change the way the header is formatted. I can click and drag to select both the width and height header fields. As soon as I do, in the contextual ribbon, in the titles and headers panel, the group tool becomes active. When I click group, a new field appears across the top of the width and height fields. I can click in this new field and type size. I'll do the same thing for the frame type and frame material headers. Then I'll right click and choose group headers. This is the same as using the tool in the contextual ribbon. I'll click in the new field and type frame. If you need to ungroup headers for any reason, you can click in the field above the grouped headers and click ungroup in the titles and headers panel of the contextual ribbon. You can also right click on the field and choose ungroup headers from the shortcut menu. I will leave these headers grouped. You can also modify the title cells of the schedule. However, be aware that the title cells behave differently than data cells. For example, when I click in the title cell, the other three tools in the titles and headers panel become available. When I click merge unmerge, the single title cell is split into the number of columns that are in the schedule. I can click and drag to select all of the cells and then select Merge Unmerge to merge the cells back into one. You can merge any number of cells in the title as long as they are adjacent to one another. You can also add new columns or rows to the title without affecting the data section of the schedule. In the contextual ribbon, there is a Columns panel and a Rows panel with similar tools. In the Rows panel, expand the Insert button. There are three tools here. Above selected will add a row above the selected row. Below selected will add a row below the selected row. Data row is currently unavailable because it is only available to add rows to the data section of the schedule. Furthermore, it is only available for certain schedules, such as key schedules and room schedules. This is because when you add a data row, you are adding an element to the model. Elements such as doors and windows cannot be added in a schedule view, but rooms and areas can. I will click Below Selected. When I do, a new row is added with several columns. I'll expand the Insert button again and choose Above Selected. This time, a row is added above the original row. Realize that the number of columns is initially the same as the number of columns in the data section, but the column widths can be adjusted separately. Therefore, you should not try to merge cells in the title to create headers for the data section. In order to add columns to the title, there is just one option. In the Columns panel of the contextual ribbon, you can click Insert to add a new column. This will essentially split the selected column in half. Realize that you can also right-click on any cell in the title and access the same tools in a shortcut menu. For example, when I right-click, you can see that Insert Row Above, Insert Row Below, and Insert Column are available. You can also choose Delete Row or Delete Column. These are the same tools that are available in the respective panels. You can also adjust the width of columns and height of rows in the title. To see this, click in a cell in the top row. Then click Resize in the Columns panel of the contextual ribbon. Revit displays the Resize Columns dialog. 
simply double the current size and click OK. As you can see, the column width has doubled. Now select Resize in the Rows panel of the contextual ribbon. Revit displays the Resize Rows dialog. Double the current size again and then click OK. Once you do, you can see that the height of the row has doubled. You can also move your cursor over one of the grid lines until the cursor changes to a move symbol. Then you can drag the grid line in either direction. You can do this to modify row heights as well as column widths in the schedule title. However, in the data section, you can only drag grid lines to adjust column widths. With the additional cells in the title, there are several things that you can do. First of all, you can simply add text. For example, I'll click in a blank cell and type project number colon. You can also add images to one of the cells. But first, I'll select several cells in the top row, right click, and choose Merge Unmerge to merge those cells into one. Next, I'll click in that cell and then select Insert Image from the contextual ribbon. When I do, an Import Image dialog appears. I'll navigate to the folder containing my exercise files and select the image to import. Once I select the image, I'll click Open. The image is immediately inserted into the cell and will resize with the cell. Additionally, you can insert a parameter into a cell. Pay attention to the fact that the name of the schedule, door schedule, is inside of carrots. This is because the value is actually a parameter, not simply text. When I click in the cell, look in the Parameters panel of the contextual ribbon. As you can see, the schedule view name has been added to this cell. I'll click in the blank cell to the right of the one with text. In the Parameters panel of the contextual ribbon, there are two drop-downs, Category and Parameter. From the Category drop-down, you can choose either Schedule or Project Information. With Schedule selected, you can choose Phase, Phase Filter, or View Name from the Parameter drop-down. I'll go back and select Project Information. Now you can select Client Name, Project Issue Date, Project Name, Project Number, or Project Status. I'll select Project Number. When I do, Project Number appears in the cell inside of carrots. The carrots simply indicate that a parameter has been placed in the cell. They will not appear when the schedule has been placed on a sheet. I'll switch to the Manage ribbon. Then I'll click Project Information in the Settings panel. In the Other section, I'll enter 120911 in the Project Number value field. Next, I'll click OK and switch back to the Modify Schedule Quantities contextual ribbon. As you can see, the project number parameter has updated. You can use any of these tools to add additional information to your schedules. If you want to remove information from a cell, you can simply click in the cell and select Clear Cell from the Titles and Headers panel of the contextual ribbon. Take note that some of the tools we have used to modify the title work differently in the data section. Also, the tools in the Titles and Headers panel do not work on data cells. So pay attention to which part of the schedule you are working on to avoid confusion and possible mistakes.